Hello! I'm going to do a quick video tour of this resource so you know exactly what you're getting when you purchase it off of Teachers Pay Teachers. So, when you click download, it will download as a zip file that you can see here. It has four files in it and I'll go through each one one by one. So the main file that has the majority of the materials is the AAC training guide. So when you open it, it will show up just like this. It's 118 pages. I had mine bound, so I'm gonna show you through the bound version, but this is what it looks like um, as a digital file. So this is my bound one. I got it bound for about $20 at Staples. I got a kind of hard back plastic, made of plastic. I got a clear front, um, and all of that has made it pretty hardy. I also got tabbed sections for each of the units. So I'll show you inside a little bit. You can see that there are five included units and each one targets a different AAC competency or skill for the adult. So you can see here the implementation steps starts at AAC basics and goes all the way down to creating communication opportunities. I typically teach these in order for paras, staff, or families that are completely unfamiliar with AAC, but you can also just pick and choose sections depending on your team's comfort level and skill level. So AAC basics, this section will help your staff get familiar with AAC, understand the different types and why AAC is so important. The sec second section for access will make sure that all the individuals in your school or program or clinic who could benefit from AAC have access and can use their system at all times. So this one is really focused on getting their systems out, available, not in their backpack, not on the shelf, that people are carrying it with, you know, the student is carrying it with them most of their day. The third section is modeling. So it's training all the staff and everyone who interacts with the AAC user to be modeling on the device. The fourth section is core vocabulary. It teaches about why core vocabulary is so versatile, flexible, and important, and allows the staff to really hone in their efforts on core vocabulary. And the last section is communication opportunities. We all know our students need many, many opportunities to learn to be successful AAC users, so this section teaches people how to elicit communication and set up lots of opportunities throughout the day. So there's this, these five chapters go in order through the book, and I'll show you in the table of contents just examples of some of the things that are included in each section. I'll also page through the whole book so you can see what they look like, but this is just to give you kind of an overview of what's included. I also include some forms like this so that you could hand this out to a staff member. They could check or stamp each section as they work through it. I provide lots of information on where to start and even month by month AAC challenges that you'll see more on later as you go through each section. Um, I have one that starts in August and one that starts in September depending on your school schedule, but I'll also show you in the editable forms later that you could edit all of this to meet the needs of your school and your staff. So we'll start at section one, it's AAC basics. Like I said, this is just to get familiar with AAC, understand the different types and why it's important. So each unit begins with an overview of all the handouts that are included, an overall goal for the unit, and then a form just like this that goes through what it is, why it's important, different types, and just information on AAC. I have one with a number in case you're using this as a um, kind of more of a strict training protocol. And then I also have one without the number if you're just handing it out as an informational tool. It goes through types of AAC, top high and low tech options, AAC best practices. And again, this goes through the four, the five steps again, that I reiterate over and over in this training manual, access, modeling, core vocabulary, and communication opportunities. The first section is getting familiar with AAC, which is the additional section to bring the total up to five. But this system is repeated again and again throughout the book, just to really simplify down what you're teaching your staff and what people are focusing on. This compares AAC intervention to typical language development, goes through AAC myths, 
who could benefit from AAC, all about me and my AAC. So you can fill this out for students so that everyone is aware of their goals, what they're working on, and how they can help. And then each unit has challenges at the end. So for the AAC um, section number one, all about the AAC basics, it's really learning the AAC system. So you'll see this one's for low tech systems. So if you're using maybe a core board, a pod book, um, even packs, it challenges you to go through, to really look through the system. How many pages? How do you navigate? How is it organized? How would you learn and use the system? And then to do some of these challenges, what buttons would you use if you were thirsty? How would you find that? So this is great for all staff, for any system that they're unfamiliar with. I also had the same setup for high-tech systems. So looking through, are things color-coded? Do they have real pictures? Does it go to a sentence strip? So it's really just talking through um, different organizational systems and getting staff familiar with it. How do you find these words? All right, so that's unit one. Unit two is access. So this is making sure that systems are out at all times, which is a huge struggle I know in many school environments. Again, it starts with an overview, a numbered handout, and a non-numbered handout. Then I go through six access tips, access frequently asked questions, the importance of providing access, presuming comp competence, and then even some posters you can use. Um, I've had success printing these a little bit smaller and putting them on the backs of devices directly. There's mini versions. If it's not a device, it's a book. I eliminated the device language on this one, so you could put this on a low-tech system. And again, mini versions. Like I said, each unit has a challenge at the end. So for access, the goal is to have the system out and accessible every hour of the day. So you check in, explain if it was accessible. The second access challenge is for the AAC user to actually take ownership of their device and carry it. So you rank how they, what kind of prompting they need and determine the average prompting. Hopefully you'll see reduced prompting throughout this challenge. The third section is modeling. So this is teaching adults, families, staff, everyone around the AAC user to model on the device, another really critical AAC competency. So this is what's included in this section. Information on modeling, numbered, unnumbered, modeling, frequently asked questions, seven modeling tips, the plus one technique, so figuring out where the child is at and then modeling one level above. Four ways to model, just to give some more ideas. About teaching more, testing less. I see this um, difficulty a lot with adults around a lot of our AAC users that they're just telling them what to do instead of teaching. And again, some posters that you could hang in your room, just as a reminder for everyone to be modeling. And then the last section is again the challenge. So this is really increasing time spent on modeling. You can have um, paras or trained staff write down the time activity and then the actual minutes spent modeling. Hopefully again, you see an increase and then a reflection piece, which is on most of the challenges. I find this really important. So staff can say, this is not working and then you can help troubleshoot. And then there's also modeling challenges um, where you can re record the time spent modeling each day of the week, ones without weekends, and then ones that even have a rating. So did not model, modeled a bit, modeled often, or modeled consistently for a whole month. And again, just a school schedule as well, Monday through Friday. The next section is core vocabulary. Again, this is focused on core instead of situation specific words. This is what's included here. A numbered handout. Again, this follows the same um, layout as the other ones, what it is, why it's important, and how to take action. And then I cite research on the bottom of a lot of these. And each of them also has a symbol that I haven't pointed out yet. This symbol is consistent unit by unit. So anytime you see this, we're talking about core. It's consistent in all the handouts. So frequently asked questions. Again, an unnumbered version. Core versus fringe for different subject areas how to select target words, 
personal core, which is really important. The importance of core vocabulary in general. Words you can model and teach during three different times of the day. Almost all of our students do all three every day. Top 36 core words to teach. Um, this talks about the descriptive teaching model and then has planning worksheets for that. And then here I give you some ideas if you wanted to implement a core vocabulary by month. This is how I always did it instead of a word of the week. I typically grouped them together by month. Again, I have it starting in August and in September. And then I have different levels. You'll see level one, level two, so that you could use this system year after year. And level three. Then I include these handouts. Um, if you wanted to do a word of the week, you can put the word up here, write down ideas for modeling, how to find it, what it looks like, and how we plan to model or use it this week. And then on the back, I include this so that the word of the week, you can have ideas of how to do it on the front, data for the entire week on the back. Here's another core vocabulary data sheet. You can write all the four words of the month and then jot down how many times they used it given what prompting. So I have these all kind of different variations of a similar theme. Then I have the core vocabulary challenge. So this is planning for how to adapt activities in order to teach core vocabulary words. Again, kind of like the descriptive teaching. And then this one is writing four vocabulary words in the left column and then writing check marks for when you model. So you're just getting those core vocabulary words modeled. The last set unit is communication opportunities. So this is trying to get opportunities for our AAC users to participate using their systems increased. Again, here's what's included. A numbered handout, what it is, why it's important, and how to take action with research at the bottom. Non-numbered handout. All the different communication functions. So a huge component of building communication opportunities is understanding that we're not just building in opportunities to request. So a lot of talk about communication functions in this section. So here you can say were requests modeled, used with a prompt, or used independently. And then it talks a lot about prompting in this section as well. I'm a big fan of a least to most prompting, reducing hand over hand. So here it talks about how to wait, then use your body, indirect, direct, then a model. Ideas for how to elicit communication. And then similar to the other packets, I include posters. I have had really good success teaching model, prompt, respond to all of my staff. Model, wait, prompt. So these are really, really great, simple strategies. And then I have handouts on how to create communication opportunities during different activities that you probably do every day. This one's book reading, during transitions, while watching videos, and then during any activity. Here's 15 communication opportunity ideas that are very specific. And then again, here are the challenge sheets. So on this one, you're identifying times during the day that you can increase or set up communication opportunities. And then here's a functions challenge. This is really increasing modeling of a variety of functions. So you check when these things were modeled and then write an example of what you modeled. And then that the last one was modeling. This one is use. So the AAC user actually did these different functions. That's more of an increased level. At the end of the packet, I include extras. So this is mostly centered around the AAC core vocabulary boards. So I have this weekly data sheet. It goes through five days of the week and targets all five of the skills taught in the book. So that they have access, modeling, communication opportunities. You can write down the words that you targeted check the different functions each day. You can see the rating scale up top. And hopefully you can chart progress of your staff and family's um, use of all these strategies using this sheet. And I also include core vocabulary boards. They are growing boards, um, so they get bigger and bigger. And I'm gonna show you actually the printed ones over here. So this is the most basic one. 
It starts out with only six symbols, but they're ones that I have found to be really versatile for a variety of activities. Then you can grow to even more. Introduce another pronoun, introduce some more verbs. The yes and no pops up. Then you can go to even more words, even more words, and then finally up to the full version. These are really great because the symbols don't move as you grow, which is a really effective strategy, so it relies a lot on motor memory. On the back of these, I include this handout that explains how to model using a core vocabulary board. So this is directly on the board, and I've had really good success with this as well. You can also print this on the back of a different board or anything um, if it matches your student's system or symbol set that they're using. So again, that's all included in the book. Then at the end, I also include um, kind of a signature page if you want to give this to staff at the beginning of the school year or when you start training. They have to check off that they read and understand each section and sign. This is another half sheet that you can use to um, put on the training materials as you give it out to staff. And then at the end, I say all the research that went into the creation of this training guide. So now I'm going to hop back to my computer and show you what else is included in the packet. That is just one of the four. Um, however, like I said, it's definitely the biggest section. So I also include editable pages. So you might have heard me say a couple of times that this is editable if you want to change it. So it also includes this file. Um, so all of this can be edited. If you want to change what the different challenge each month is, what the goal is, if your school is a year-round school, you can change all of it on here. So I'll go through. All of the data sheets and all of the challenges are all editable. The All About Me, so you can actually just type the goals in here. That's a lot easier than handwriting at all. All the challenges, and this is all editable. Because sometimes you don't want the lip prompting to be the same, or you might want to have a student-specific system that you're following and this is all editable. So a lot of these like you could type in these things too and so you're not handwriting in. You can change the words you're targeting each month to match classroom themes and even this one I kind of give an idea for all done. You can type in ideas for modeling, you could add the symbol pictures, how to find it, so first go to categories then animals, you know, if you're doing specific words. You could paste in the symbol from specific boards or systems. You can change the questions. So these are all the editable forms. All right, the third file is a version of the core vocabulary words that shows people of color. Um, so I can show you what that looks like. So you can see this one. It is similar, but just slightly different to the original. But this one I noticed I had a lot of kind of white skin and white clip art in this one. So you can see it's just slightly different. So I included this as well, depending on the student you're using it with. All the symbols and locations are the same. And the last file is the staff training PowerPoint. So this is used if you want to do a broad training and I can show you through it quickly as well. So all about AAC. And it goes through the exact same system that's in the training guide. What it is, who uses it, different types, why it's important, what is AAC. And then I include text you can see on the bottom with more information, maybe what I would say if I were doing this training. I include video links for two different um, sources online. And then here again, I go through the exact same system. So you could, in theory, do this training with your staff and then provide them with handouts. It goes through one, section one, two, three, and four. This is a really great um, site for talking about core vocabulary. You can even just search for UpGore 5 if you want to see it. but this is the staff training document. Again, it's very, very similar to what's in the training guide, just provides it in a PowerPoint format for you. I hope that gives you a good idea of everything that's included in the AAC Implementation Toolkit. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions, if it'll work for your caseload. Thanks for watching.